Hi and welcome again to another screencast. Uh, the first two screencasts that we looked at would have been on the history of civil machines and how they've been meeting human needs throughout history. The second one, all about simple machines and uh, the types of advantages that they can provide for us. And this time we're going to extend a little bit what we're doing. We're going to look at complex machines. So today's learning target, what is the difference between a simple and a complex machine? Now before we go any further, let's take a quick look at the definition here. A complex machine, as it states, can be made of two or more simple machines. It basically, it's a device in which simple machines all work together. Okay? Uh, if you can think of any examples that are really good about complex machines, um, the best one that I can come up with is a bike. And, and here's why. Now a bike has many uh, different parts and many different um, simple machines in it and we're going to go through a few uh, simple machines in here. Uh, but a bike is essentially a complex machine. It's made up of many different parts all working together to perform a single function. Now that definition there is known as a system. A system is a group of parts that work together to perform one function, a single function. Uh, the analogy that I like to make is like your digestive system. Okay, It is the entire process from eating all the way until expelling your food. Okay, And that whole system which involves your stomach, your small intestine, your large intestine, your liver, your mouth, your throat, all these things together form a system is known as your digestive system. Now within each uh, system there are individual parts and those parts have a single role. That is a subsystem. So let's for example take a look at your stomach again. Your stomach has one job that is to break down the food. Your small intestine has one job that's to uh, in, uh, sorry to absorb all the uh, nutrients available in the food. Your large intestine, one job to absorb all the water. Okay, so what we call these individual parts that have a single function, we call that a subsystem. Okay, and several subsystems work together to perform a single task. And these usually make up a system or a simple machine. Okay, now in this picture here of the bike, what is the system? I know it sounds odd me asking you questions like this again, but what's the system here? The system here should be the bike. It is a collection of parts that all work together to perform a single function. Okay, the single function being transportation. Okay. Now in this one, can you identify the subsystems or the different simple machines that each have a single role? Okay. There are quite a few in here. I see a lever with the pedal. There is a wheel and axle, clearly. There are wedges on the gears, and we'll get into gears later, so we won't count the gears, but there are wedges in the gears, as in the teeth. The handlebars are a lever. Pull one way, pull the other way. It's for steering. The brakes are a lever. Okay, You pull down on the brake, and it will cause the other brakes to squish together, but the handlebar itself of the brake, that is a lever. Okay, You could consider the brakes a wedge. You could even consider the tires as a wedge. Okay, Think of when they drive through the mud, they separate or wedge out uh, the water or the mud as you drive through. Um, there are uh, a few on there that are questionable. Some people said the seat is a wedge. Uh, don't really consider the seat a wedge, maybe a wedgy, uh, but not a wedge. Okay, uh, but those few that we've listed there, as you can see in the picture, are some uh, subsystems or simple machines as part of the whole. Now there may be others, and that's totally fine. If you do find others, let's share it in class and let's look at it. Okay, but there you go. There's some subsystems and some systems. So just again to clarify, a system. A group of machines or devices that work together to complete a single task, like the bike, is a system. And a subsystem is an individual device or a part that has a specific function, like the handlebars. That's a lever, that's a subsystem, individual function for steering. Okay. So now that we have these systems and subsystems, what do they do for us? Okay. Well, the main goal of a mechanical device 
one of the main goals, and especially a main goal in a complex machine, is to transfer force, to move the force from one spot to another. And we talked about that being one of the uh, four advantages, okay, to transfer or move the force, okay. So some complex machines use something called a linkage to move an object by transferring the energy from an energy source. Now a linkage, okay, again, transfers the energy from one spot to another. Take a look at this car engine for one. Okay, this car engine uh, has something called a crankshaft, and it's attached to pistons. And as the pistons fire, okay, they travel downward and they turn the crankshaft. That crankshaft, in turn, turns the wheel at the other end and causes that timing belt to turn. Okay, that timing belt transfers the energy to the other cr camshafts at the top, and we get different um, uh, uh, energy forces being transferred from one part of the engine to the other. Okay, that's essentially how a linkage works. We also see a linkage in your bike. Okay, that's a great example of a linkage. It transfers the energy where you are the energy and it transfers the energy through the linkage to the wheels to cause you to move. Okay, you use the linkage to transfer energy from the pedals to the wheels. Very simple linkage. You could even think of a garage door opener having a linkage. Okay, now sometimes a linkage isn't enough. It's not powerful enough. So you need to use something called a transmission. They are very complex or high-end linkages that transfer energy from an energy source to an object. They're still transferring energy, but they're more powerful. We see these special types of linkages in engines when they transfer energy from the engine to a car wheel. Okay, So here's an example of a uh, transmission. It's usually encased because look at all those gears. Can you imagine if a rock or chunk of mud or snow or ice got on those gears? It would destroy the transmission. Okay, So this is usually encased in a nice metal case. But this is what a transmission looks like. And you can see all those gears okay, transferring power to the wheels. Okay, And that's basically how, uh, how the, the car gets its power. So how does it exactly work? Well, I've got this great little animation here and it shows all about driving. So let's say you know, you're parked in your car and you, you drive a standard. Okay, So a standard means you have a stick shift and you are ready to go. Your car is a humming. This is your car sitting in the driveway. Not going anywhere, right? First we want to do is you want to click on reverse. Okay. You notice here, and I'll do this again, I'll put it back in neutral. I want you to watch where that yellow arrow is. Okay, right now it's spinning forward. But if I put it in reverse, it spins backwards. Okay. And it spins backwards, again I'll put it in neutral, because of this area right here, this circled area. Watch up here too. Okay, you'll see a movement in the gear in the gear train there. Okay, now it's moving backwards. Okay, backing out of the driveway. Oh, okay, we've reached the end of the driveway. We'll put it back in neutral. And now we're kind of coasting. Okay, and in order to get a little bit of speed, okay, we need to get into first gear. Okay, again, you see that big movement there. Watch again. First gear. Okay, so now we're kind of humming along. First gear uh, doesn't get us very far. Now we got to slide into second gear. Watch for the movements. Okay, second gear. A little bit faster now, a little bit more power, transferring that power to the wheels, okay, getting a little going. And now we get up to third gear, okay. Now we're humming along, we're driving down Mayor McGrath. Uh, we're driving down Mayor McGrath, we turn down 6th Avenue, and now after some time we get to whoop up drive. Third gear is not going to do it anymore, we need more power. So we throw it into fourth gear. And now we're really humming along. Take a look at the speed of that axle now. Okay, it's just a flying because we've got all this power transferring from the gears into the into the uh, axle there, which is eventually transferring it to the engine. Now I'm not an engine expert, so it's not the best explanation in the world, but I do know that this is how gears work. Okay, gears help increase or decrease speed, and we're going to get into gears in a minute here. But this is essentially how you have a transmission working. Okay. You don't need to know all the details on a transmission or how they work in the car, but you do need to know that transmissions are very powerful and they transfer a lot of force. Okay. Okay. So essentially, we look at transmissions again. They are a series of gear gears arranged from the largest to the smallest. And this allows the operator to adjust how much force and how much speed is in the motor. Okay. And I see my little picture there, the need for speed need for speed. Okay. Now here's where it gets really important here. Gears. Without gears in a transmission it doesn't work. 
so gears are an essential part of most mechanical systems. Usually gears are a pair of wheels, and not just a pair, sometimes there's more or less, as in the picture of the transmission, that have teeth that interlink okay, or, or mesh together. Okay. Now you have two types of gears. There's what's called a driving gear, and that's the one that you are turning. Think of, you know, you're driving the wheel of a car, you turn that one. And then there's the driven gear, the one that is being turned. Driven, being turned, driving, the one that you turn. Okay. So here we go. We have two gears here. You know, there's no teeth on here, but the essentials are there. We have two gears, one large, one small. Okay. Right now, the large one is me, my driving gear. That's the one I'm controlling. The purple one is my driven gear. You see how there's a transfer of force there? And of course, you can observe how the driving gear, the big one, is moving much slower than the driven gear. And we're going to get into that in a little bit here. That's had to do with gear ratios. I think you talked about that at math, okay, gear ratios. Now, in a gear system, one turning gear will transfer energy to the next gear, and to the next, and to the next, to the next, and to the next, if necessary. Okay? This is rotational energy into whatever we want. We can actually turn gears into moving hands of a clock, or we can turn gears into uh, the moving power of a vehicle. Gears give us all this energy and power that we want and need in a mechanical system. It transfers the energy. Okay? Again, this is all about transferring energy. Linkages transfer energy. Transmissions transfer energy. Gears transfer energy. And also, as the title says, transfers force. Okay? Now, gears are used for two reasons. They change the speed or they increase the power or the torque. And I should maybe said change the power or the torque. Let's do that right now. We'll cross that out. We'll say change okay, the power or torque. And we'll get into power and torque uh, as well a little bit later on. Okay. Now, when we use two gears in the same size, we have equal speed and equal force between the drive gear and the driven gear, right? As this picture shows, my drive gear and my driven gear are the same size. So the speed and the force within them is the same. And in your notebook, this is already written out for you, so just follow along here. Okay. A large driving gear decreases torque. So if my driving gear is much larger than my driven gear, okay, it produces a uh, driven gear that is faster and has less torque. And torque is twist. Okay, We'll get more into twist a little later. These are called multiplying gears. And here's a good example. Okay, this Look at how big and how uh, the size of my driving gear. And look at the size of my driven gear. Much, much smaller. So when you rotate the driving gear, you'd expect the driven gear to go faster right? because it's smaller. That also decreases torque. It decreases power. Okay, So when I have a gear train like this as set up here, that means I'm increasing speed but decreasing my power. Okay, this is called a multiplying gear. If I switch it, I have a smaller driving gear and a larger driven gear. I reduce the speed, but I increase power. We call that a reducing gear. Okay, here's a reducing gear. I have a very small driving gear, as evident right here but a very large driven gear. This is going to be a much slower machine, but it's going to have more power. Okay, So what do you need? Do you need more speed or more power? That's going to affect the setup of your gear train or your gear system. Okay, This is a reducing gear. Okay, So here's a graphic here how you can increase the speed as well. Notice how the drive gear is much larger than any of the driven gears. Okay, and don't need to worry about the ratios or the T's or the RPMs right now, but just take a look at the sizes, right? My drive gear is the largest. All my driven gears are smaller. Therefore, I'm going to increase the speed and make it less powerful. In this one, okay, I'm going to decrease the speed because my drive gear is so much smaller than my driven gears, but I'm going to increase the power. Okay? We're going to take a closer look at this in our lab uh, activity when we talk about uh, gears in the robotic systems. So uh, just get a, a feel for this right now, and we'll explore more with our hands. Okay, so here's the gist of it: as we, as the size of the gear changes, so is what's called the gear ratio. Okay, the gear ratios uh, are different in different gear setups. If we have a very small drive gear 
and a large driven gear, this produces a lower gear ratio. As in my drive gear is my big number and my driven gear is my small one. It takes six times for my drive gear to go around and only once in my driven gear. Right? If I have if I switch it, if my drive gear is large and my driven gear is small, this will be a higher gear ratio and it'll be fast. Okay. So I have here my drive gear for every one rotation, my driven gear goes around twice. Okay, so there's different gear ratios there. Do you need to memorize gear ratios? No. Do you need to know how they work? Absolutely. Okay, so star, highlight, underline uh, the part about reducing gears and multiplying gears. You need to know how they work within the system. Okay, because when we set up systems, you need to be able to know how to increase or decrease the speed depending on the gear. Okay, so to summarize everything here, what's this been all about? Okay, it's been all about the transfer of energy. In a complex machine, energy is transferred in one of three ways. It's transferred in a linkage like a bike chain or a garage door opener. It's transferred in a transmission, a much more powerful linkage that transfers more energy and more power. Or energy can be transferred in gears. And gears can also transfer energy, transfer force, and change the speed. Okay, so there's there's a lot there for you to memorize uh, and to, to understand, and that's why we're going to spend the next couple of days uh, looking at gears and complex machines and, and how they work together with simple machines to perform a task or a function. So if you're a little confused or if you have any questions, please write those down, bring them to class, we're going to go over it. Uh, but that is the screencast on complex machines. Uh, I hope that uh, I haven't confused you totally. Uh, you're welcome to go back and check it out if you need to. Uh, and uh, like I said, bring any questions uh, to class. Okay. Thanks again for watching.